Welcome to another budgeting video. Now, I thought it would be kind of fun since we are going through and we are working on budgeting and I've got my budget planner set up and I've shared several budgeting videos already in 2020. I thought that I would walk you through how I actually pay my bills. So you've seen my budget planner, you've seen how it works, but I thought I would actually walk you through the entire process. So I get paid and my husband gets paid. We work at the same school district. We get paid on the 10th and the 25th of every month. So this pay period that I will be sharing today is our 10th paycheck. So I'm going to share with you what documents I pull out, how I go about documenting them and all of that. Now you guys, this may be something that seems to be a little bit too much and I understand that it might be a little bit too much, but it's just the way that I do it. I will actually go through and write everything on a piece of paper before I move it to my checkbook register and before it gets moved into my budget planner. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna share with you how I store my bills and then we're gonna walk through the entire process together. So right now we are standing in my office and the pink filing cabinet that you see right now came from CB2. I don't think they have it anymore. It was on clearance when my mom got it for me like five years ago. They have many other different colors though. I will link that in the description below in case you are interested in another color. They do have it available. Now this one was deeply discounted so I did not pay the original price because it is pricey. So that is where I got it. Now on top, I've had this same bill organization system for, y'all, since we've been in this house, five years, we've been in this house five years. So I've had the same system. This right here is a Pottery Barn Bedford two drawer organizer. This has been the best way for us to organize bills and to get rid of all of the mail paper clutter. So it has two drawers and we get paid twice a month. So the top one, I put a label that says 10th and the bottom one, I put a label that says 25th. So all I do is when I get a bill in the mail, like I got a bill in the mail today, and all I did was I came up here because it is a bill that I pay on the 10th, and I put it in the 10th drawer. So it goes straight from the mailbox to a drawer. So anything that gets paid on the 10th is here. Anything that gets paid on the 25th is down here. And then I have some Goodwill slips back there. I'll keep them in there until we do our taxes at the end of the year. So since we're getting paid on the 10th, I'll just come to the 10th drawer. I will pull out I will pull out everything in this drawer and I will move it to a table or my planner station, wherever I might be doing the bills at that moment. So the actual bill paying process has several different elements to it and I have everything sitting right here. So I have my monthly bill tracker and if you notice it's dirty, I don't know what I did. I guess I spilled coffee or something on it. So my monthly bill tracker will stay in one of my two drawers depending on what pay period I'm working on. So the 10th paycheck is what we're working on today. So I pulled it out of the 10th drawer. So once we get finished today, it will go in the 25th drawer. So when I'm ready to pay those bills, all I've got to do is pull it out of the drawer and I know what bills need to be paid. So I like to not guess because some things I have paper bills that come in the mail. Some things I will get an email about and this is a good way to keep them all organized. Now I will tell you that the 10th paycheck it appears that we have a lot more that needs to get paid than the 25th and that is because that is the way that we've organized our bills because our mortgage takes a big chunk of our income on the 25th now it's not our mortgage is not a lot um so don't think that it just one thing down here accounts for several things up here so that's kind of how we weighed it out we called some places when we moved here to see if we could shift some dates of some bills so we made that happen so this is what we're working on here the 10th and then the 10th here so now what we're going to do is i've got bills back here 
And then I have my list here. So I like to go off of my list here and I like to make one copy on a piece of paper. Why? Because I will go through here and I will scribble and I'll see how much I have left after that those bills have been paid because some things like your electricity will fluctuate, which at this moment I'm filming this a little bit ahead of time. So I don't know how much that will be, but I will write it down. It'll just have a question mark. So after I get everything written down on this piece of paper and all my little notes jotted down, and I know that all the bills have been paid or they're scheduled to be paid online, then I will come to my budget planner here. And if you've not seen my budget planner video, I will link that in a card above. I'll come through here, I'll divide it out, and I'll write everything down. So this has, the 10th has a page, and then the 25th has a page. So this is what it looked like February 10th. I like to put the check numbers too, for the checks that I write just as a mental note in case I need to know where that check went and you know, I don't wanna get out my checkbook register. So that is how this is going to work. We're gonna first write down all of the bills that I have here, everything that needs to get paid. Once they get paid, we will check mark them off. Now I will tell you that Lowe's has now been paid off and I won't really get into why it's been paid off or how it's gotten paid off because the last time that I checked in, we still owed $613 on that. I will talk about that in my budget update for March. So my March budget update, I will talk about where we're sitting and all of that. So this is how I have it broke down right now, but I'm actually thinking about switching these two here. So I had it for the 10th to put $500 for Kate's beach cheer, her cheer competition in Orange Beach. And then I had the truck 200 and then um, Orange Beach 250. But I'm thinking about switching these because we already paid the truck on the 10th. So if I could just pay the extra $200 instead of having to do two different payments that month, I think that is what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna put March 10th. Paycheck. And I would like to pay all of the bills online, but there are some bills that will charge me extra if I pay them online. So I'm actually gonna share with you what our truck payment is today. And that is actually the bill that we are tackling right now to pay off. We don't owe a whole lot on it, but I am going to share with you what the amount is. Let me make sure everything is marked off. Okay, so we're gonna put capital one, and this is one that I have to write a check on. And our amount that we normally pay every month is $329.46. So for this paycheck, we're gonna do 529.46. So our truck payment right now is $329.46. So once we get this truck paid off, y'all, we're gonna have $330 extra every 10th to pay towards a debt that we owe. So this is what the truck is looking like right now. Let me zoom in. So this right here, and this amount is going to be a little off. So it tells me that the payoff, the principal balance is 1952.67. So I'm gonna put 1952.67 because of the interest that's getting added on. So that's how much we owe on the truck. So I'm gonna go in here on 310 and subtract that amount from the 1952.67. So we are paying 529.46. So after we subtract that out, that means we are going to owe 1423.21. And that feels so great. I cannot wait to get this paid off. You have no idea. So that is what we're gonna have left there. I'm just gonna leave that there and then move this to the side. 
and check that off once I get this put together. So I'm gonna get this put in the envelope and then we'll move to the next thing. Okay, now we're moving on to the next thing. So for the next thing, I'm just going to write down Orange Beach because I will know what that means for Kate's cheer trip. So for that, I'm just gonna put 250. And then also I'm gonna go in because I do have a section in my budget planner for that. So here's my budget planner and it should say, yep, cheer trips. So I'll put 310 down here and then 250. So right now we have 500 for that trip, which will cover our hotel. So we will be there from that Friday to that Monday and roughly that's how much it costs for the hotel. So then we move to Arivac. Arivac is $9. They take that out automatically. Now we're moving to AT&T. Okay, and for AT&T, this is something I pay online. And you guys, I really don't mind sharing with you how much all of this costs because you know what? That's how you, that's just, not everybody's is the same, but this is how much ours is. So ours is two eighteen oh four, and my mom's is on with mine and Nathan's. So the two eighteen covers my mom's, mine, and Nathan's cell phone. So my mom does pay us for her portion of the cell phone, which is 67. So I'll just put, put plus that, so that will be coming in. So then I will pay this on the website and then we'll come back to do the next thing. Okay, so I've got that paid so I can check mark that off. Now, I do not know what my electric bill is right now. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write it down here Paragool, light, water, and cable because that normally does not come out. Like I'm filming this a little bit ahead of time. So that normally does not come out until like the 8th and I get paid on the 10th. So just note that these things will get um, paid on the day they're supposed to. I'm just kind of filming this ahead of time and getting everything lined out so that you kind of know how my process goes beforehand. So I'm just gonna write that down there and I will account for that once it comes in. Okay, ATA is Derek's Taekwondo and that is just taken out. I think it's taken out on the 15th of every month and that is $125 since he's moved up. Before he moved up, it was 99 a month, so it has moved up. Mohila is my student loan. And this is one that they do not send me a bill for. It is just online. So I will have to check and see what it is. I am thinking it is, let me look from last month. So you're gonna get to see how much I pay on student loans. 174.16. 174.16 is what I pay for my student loan. So that is not on the snowball yet, but it's gonna be really nice once that 174 is accounted for and we don't have to pay for it anymore. So I'm gonna go and pay that and then we will come back and we will move to State Farm, which is our auto insurance. And I'm really not sure at the moment, I don't think that is available to pay. So I'm not check marking that and I'm probably not gonna end up check marking State Farm because I don't think that's available for me to pay online yet, but I am going to check it. Okay, so State Farm was not available to pay yet, so I'm not going to check mark it off, but Mohila was. So you might be wondering how I'm doing this considering I'm filming this before the 10th. I am just going and setting dates to pay these bills. So for instance, Mohila, I just went in and said, please pay, make that payment on March 10th. So that's just how it is. So Northwest Mutual is our life insurance. And we pay $58.85 on that, a paycheck. Okay, we don't owe a bill to Hendrix, which is our doctor's office. And the life insurance just comes out. We don't have to account for any of that. Hendrix, we don't have that, but I do have another bill from, I think the dentist, or I thought I did, maybe I don't. Yep, from the dentist for $20. So I'm gonna go ahead and pay that. And six, so number 
3876. So, and for the Capital One, normally, like I told you, I pay that by a check, but I'm actually not going to pay that by check this time because I'm going to call since I'm over, I'm paying over what we're expected to. I want to say they told us that's the way that we needed to do that so that we just keep getting a bill every single month and it doesn't go towards the next bill. Okay, so I got that bill ready to go. And so Target is actually paid off. So I can actually go in here and mark that out. Woohoo. Okay, Bank of America is my husband's credit card. My Chase has been paid already. So Bank of America, it's not on the list to pay off right now. So that we just put a hundred on that every month. So I'll make sure he pays that. I'm not check marking it off because that's my husband's bill that he pays. Okay, Lowe's is paid off. Disney Plus, let me put that on here, which is $6.99. And we have accounted for our snowball. So let me go through and make sure that I've done everything. So Capital One, I've got that written down. I got wrote down at Orange Beach, Arivac. Um, at and T. I've got the electric, ATA, Mohila, State Farm, we don't know yet, um, life insurance, um, the dentist, Target's paid off, Bank of America, I've already made a payment to my Chase card, and Disney Plus. So we got all of that written down, so now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer this to our budget planner. So I'm going to go to the March, March 10th, and I'm going to get this all lined up. So I have all of that accounted for. I've got it put into my budget planner here, and we did go ahead back here, and we did the truck update for that, and then I went through the cheer trips page here, and I added that here. Now, if you wonder why I have that marked out at the top, that is because we've already been to Branson. We had all the money. Y'all, we had the exact amount we needed for that trip. So we did a good job saving for that. And now we are working on this April trip here. So all of that is now accounted for. I've got my monthly updated. This sheet here, I will keep. And um, this is what I will keep for marking in my checkbook register once the payday comes. And then this is ready. I'm gonna keep this out and wait to be able to update the check marks here and those amounts on both of these for the electric and State Farm. And then I need to check off when my husband pays Bank of America because he's the one that pays that bill. So you guys, that is how I pay bills every single time. Pay time and bill paying time rolls around. So that is the process that I go through every 10th and 25th of every month when we get paid to pay bills. So I know it may seem like a tricky little process and a little tedious things here and there, but you guys, it works best for me if I write everything on a piece of paper so I can jot down notes and then put it in my budget planner and then put it in my checkbook register. It just works well for me might not work well for you, but I just wanted to share how we pay bills. Now, there are a few like the Bank of America that my husband pays. He pays a few. So once he tells me that he went online and paid his bills, I will check mark those off and put those in the checkbook register as well. So I did want to share with you one other thing. So we do not keep bills once they have cleared the bank. So I have a holding spot that I hold the bills once we know they've gotten paid. Once we know they've gotten paid, we shred them. So I wanted to share that with you too. So right here is my little holding station, I guess you would call it for bills. So the little basket on the left, every time I pay bills, 
After I pay them, I will put the statements in here if we got a paper statement. And then probably once a month, I will go through and I will shred the papers that need to be shredded. Now, this is an Amazon Basics shredder. We've had it for several years. Very inexpensive and works really good. I really do like it, so I will link that in the description below. But we don't feel the need to save the bills once they've cleared the bank because all of that information can be found online. So that is all for this budgeting video. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I sit down and pay bills every single paycheck and pay period. And now this is something that I do myself. My husband does not do this. I will update him after I pay the bills. And you guys, it's not to say that this is the way that works best for everybody. But I just enjoy doing the bill paying process. I know that sounds crazy, but I like to keep it organized a certain way. And then I will fill him in on it and we'll discuss what things we've paid off and what we're looking forward to the next paycheck. So you guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. In the comments below, the common question is going to be, how do you pay bills? Do you do everything online? Do you balance your checkbook? Is there something that you wanna share with us about your bill paying system? Let us know that in the comments below. So you guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you give it a big thumbs up. By giving my videos a thumbs up, it shows YouTube you're engaged and you like my content, which means they'll start suggesting it and recommending it to more people, which means our community will grow and will continue to spread positivity. Also, I hope you hit that red subscribe button to become a part of our community and our mission to get organized on a budget and with a plan together. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and until next time, bye you guys.